In 2008, 36 million prescriptions for antidepressants were given in the United Kingdom. By 2018, that had risen to 71 million, a doubling in only 10 years. At this rate, it will soon become the norm for humans to need drugs to get through life. This crisis in our mental health is caused by the abandonment of God. Without meaning in our lives, it is easy to become depressed. Humans are not made like other animals. We need a sense of purpose. We are created to love God. And, as St. Augustine says, our hearts will not rest until they rest in him. What is depression? The word literally means to be pushed down. It can feel like being crushed by a large weight. Instead of the normal peaks and troughs of the emotional life, there is only flatness. Instead of colour, only greyness. The root of the word emotion is motion. A normal emotional life involves movement, change, highs and lows. Depression, on the other hand, is stuckness, stagnation. What are the causes of depression? We will look at three areas. Sometimes depression can be connected to the situation one is in, the job, the relationship, health problems. Sometimes depression can follow from other emotional issues, such as anger, grief, trauma or low self-esteem. But sometimes there appears to be no cause. It just is. So, how can we address it? Let's look at each area in turn. If a depression is caused by our situation, we need to address that. I once suffered depression because I spent some years working in an office in a job I did not enjoy. I had a sense I was wasting my life, that I was meant to be doing something else, although I had no idea what. Eventually I found something I loved, working with natural medicine, and I moved on. I had the sense that this was what I was meant to be doing. It is important to ask God to reveal our purpose to us. There is nothing wrong with working in an office if God has not called you to do something else. But for some, they may be called to a specific purpose, such as caring for others. On the other hand, it is not good to drift aimlessly between jobs. Sometimes we need to learn to deal with the situation we are placed in. At such times, we ask God to give us the strength to deal with it, at least for now. And we can also pray that God reveals his will for us. Often it is only revealed slowly and emerges through much prayer. I have seen in my work that depression often follows chronic ill health and especially fatigue. There are two approaches one can take here. Firstly, one can take steps to get well. Get the basics right. Good diet, exercise. Often people know what they need to do but still don't do it. The motivation is not there. But we need to understand that God wants us to be healthy and happy in the same way that we want this for our own children. St. Paul says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? If we do not look after our bodies, we are not looking after what God has given us. We are dishonouring the gift of the human body. You can also get healthy for the sake of those around you. By being well and happy, you will inspire others to do likewise. So, pray to God to give you the motivation. There is another way which is more difficult, the way taken by many saints. To use illness as a spiritual path. To accept bodily suffering in order to derive spiritual benefits. To love Christ so much that one wants even to share his suffering. Saint Paisios, a modern-day saint from Greece, even asked God that he'd give him cancer for this purpose. This wish was granted towards the end of his life. Perhaps this is hard for us to understand. But if we are not able to cure our physical ailments after all our efforts, let us pray that God will give us the grace to accept them. By doing so, rather than feeling resentful, complaining constantly. 
we attract much grace. People who remain positive and cheerful in the face of serious illness give extraordinary witness to the power of God in overcoming ill health. They show that, in the end, the spirit can overcome the body with God's help. Like Job, they suffer affliction, but still do not reject God. And, like Job, are repaid a thousand times over. So with depression caused by our situation, there are two steps. First, we can ask for God's help to resolve a situation. Second, if we cannot resolve a situation, we ask for God's help to endure it, knowing that the patient acceptance of long-suffering brings many blessings. Let us now look at depression which is caused by other emotional issues. Sometimes it is said that depression can be caused by not fully processing emotions. Emotions may be too overwhelming to deal with, such as terror, shock or grief. So, somehow they are stored inside us. I've worked with depression for many years and, as progress is made, very often old emotions come to the surface and are released. So how can we deal with emotions which seem overwhelming? That anger which is so powerful we feel like killing someone. That grief which is so painful we feel like dying. Sometimes it feels like God is absent. Even Christ on the cross cries out, Lord, why have you abandoned me? But God is there, sharing our pain. We may abandon him, but he certainly does not abandon us. God seems to withdraw, to allow us to feel what it is like without him. But he is there in the darkness, and if we are faithful, we will see his light once more. Perhaps in this life, perhaps not until the next one. It is precisely in our agony that we know God exists. The agony is our separation from God. The pain we feel is the pain of separation from the holy life we were made for. It is like the pain of the orphan cast out from its mother's side. It seeks scraps of food, knowing that it has been excluded from warmth and love. If there were no God, why would we feel that agony? Why would we not live like any other animal, content with sex and food? If we remain faithful to God, the darkness which seemed to defeat us begins to lift. Though I walk through the darkest valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. With God's help, even the strongest emotions lose their power over us. Sitting quietly in prayer, we can see the emotions for what they are, which is nothing compared to the power of God. Simply by observing our emotions in the presence of God, they begin to dissipate like wax melting or smoke vanishing. Even when all those around us fall to pieces, we are protected. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Thirdly, we will look at depression which just is. Depression is easier to deal with if there is an obvious cause. You lost your job, your relationship broke up, someone died. It's understandable that you feel down. But what about times when there is no cause? You have a good job, a nice family, good health but still you're depressed. Because there is no cause, you wonder what is wrong with you. You get depressed about being depressed. Things spiral downwards. So why do we feel like this? We need to remind ourselves of our human nature. We were created in the image of God, called to be partakers of the divine nature. And yet, look at the state of the world and the state of our souls. Why would we not feel defeated? So, should we just accept being depressed? No. We must carefully distinguish between two states of mind. On the one hand, depression. On the other hand, what the early Christians called 
holy sorrow. What's the difference? Depression is numbness, an absence of feeling, despair, lack of direction, apathy. Holy sorrow is quite different. Rather than feeling numb, we feel an acute sense of pain at our separation from God. Rather than despairing in our ignorance and confusion, we know exactly what to do. We are called to stand up and fight. Rather than lacking direction, we know which way to run, towards God. Yes, we are still in darkness, but, as the Gospel of John puts it, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Yes, we feel acute sorrow at our separation from God. But we have faith that God is still with us. We have been like the prodigal son in squandering the gifts God has given us. But we have confidence in the rich mercy of our Lord, that he will welcome us with open arms, and, indeed, has already prepared a spiritual banquet for us. Man was made to have a loving relationship with God. If we turn our back on him, if we do not kindle our divine spark, it is natural for us to feel depressed. If we go against our true nature, things will not feel right and will not go well for us. Depression is not an aberration, but the natural state of man trying to live without God. We can go further and say that God allows us to feel depressed in order to call us back to him. If we were always happy, doubtless we would forget God. It is precisely in our trouble that we sense our separation from God. And if we heed God's calling, we will redouble our efforts to turn around and face him. Let us conclude with some prayers. Lord, help us to see that our pain is due to our separation from you. Give us the strength to accept and endure patiently whatever comes our way. Help us to use suffering as a means to come closer to you. Help us to see that you willingly suffered for us and help us to endure our suffering for the sake of others. Help us to find our true purpose in life so that we may best serve you. Lord, help us to carry our cross joyfully.